Paula. I'm here because I am benthic foraminiferal specialist. So we are here to look for the benthics and see what they tell us about the paleo environment, the environment of the deep sea when they were uh, living there. My name is Hitomi Uchimura and uh, I'm studying benthic foraminifera. I, I want to know the relation Costa Rican tectonics. Uh, my name is Ashley Burkett and I am a micropaleontologist specializing in benthic foraminifera. Forams are single-celled organisms that have a, uh, a test or shell-like structure um, that are prevalent in the fossil record from about 540 million years ago to now. I'm Maria. I am doing my PhD in Switzerland in the University of Lausanne. I'm specializing in radiolarians. What are radiolarians? Okay. This is a radiolarian, you see? This is an spumilarian. This is the more typical, like a sphere. It has these spines normally. A radiolarian is a marine plankton and it, the skeleton is made of silica. There is different, lots of different kinds. We have 500 different species of radiolarians. My name is Alan Baxter. Um, I'm a micropaleontologist on board. I just deal mainly in, in radiolarians and nanofossils. Both can tell you subtly different things about um, the oceans that they existed in and the age that they were. Um, they were alive, so um, just using any type of microfossil in order to help with um, bigger processes like tectonics. Micropaleontology is fascinating in and of itself, but on this ship um, we're using it primarily for biostratigraphy. Biostratigraphy is um, using microfossils to get an idea of the age of the material that we're looking at. It's nice to have a continuous sequence that you can actually see the different um, assemblages or groups of fossils as we go, as we drill down, um, and we can see the change. So we see the introduction of a new species of fossil, a fossil or else we see the um, demise and extinction of a, of, a, of a species of fossil. And this can tell us when the ages change. Between biostatigraphy the biostatigraphers and the paleomagnetists. They can uh, come together and you build the final, let's say, a final uh, age framework for the ship. How we confirm, especially with the comparison, could be with paleomagnet, with paleomagnet, with PMAG. <laughs> My name is Xi Xi Zhao. I'm a shipboard paleomagnetist. Paleomagnetism is a study of Earth's magnetic field in the past, the ancient Earth's magnetic field. In Chinese, we call Wu Di Ci Xue, which is more precisely reflect the translation because in Chinese, Wu means parallel. Di Ci means geomagnetism, Xue means study. If English paleomagnetism, it's just a paleo and the magnetism. The Earth has a magnetic field. Um, we think Earth's magnetic field is generated from outer core. You know, our Earth has a, it's a layered structure. We have inner core, outer core, mantle, crust because uh, the core, the inner core is a solid uh, iron, not what we think, but the outer core is um, uh, fluids, it's a uh, metallic fluids, iron, nickel, you know, all these fluids. So when these fluids with Earth's rotation, um, when these electronic fluids are rotating, it will produce a field.
Earth not only has a magnetic field, this field is dynamic because it changes the positions, so-called geomagnetic reversal. They found in one reversal, which are around 70 million years ago, in somewhere in Miocene, the field changed itself so fast, about uh, six degrees a day. So if you imagine North Pole and the South Pole, the, the, the angular distance is 180 degrees apart. So if it was um, six degrees a day, some, something like a month, you know, you will, you, you will, you will swing the whole thing. But like today, Earth's field has not reversed itself for the last 780,000 years. And uh, if you look at the records back to 10 million years ago, you just count how many reversals, you average them out, it's about four or five reversals per million year. So we are, you know, almost one million year, 0.78, um, no reversal. It's kind of strange. Well, we study uh, this ancient records of a geomagnetic field by measuring the remnant magnetization, which uh, um, is carried by the magnetic minerals, for example, magnetite or hematite or other things. Uh, they record Earth's magnetic field when they were formed. For sediments, like we're doing here now, imagine little tiny magnetic mineral, uh, like, like little grain and needle, when they deposit in the sea floor with other sediments, they will record the Earth's field at that time. I have to run. <laughs>